Hi folks, Jobin here. Do you know what time it is? I do. It's lighter review time. This is what is commonly called a permanent or everlasting match. It is a slightly unusual type of lighter that maybe not all of you are familiar with. This particular one is made in China and yeah, I know what you may be thinking and I hear ya. I've had quite a few lighters from China that were absolute garbage. But this one happens to be Honest brand. And in my opinion, Honest is to lighters what San Ranmu is to knives. They're good designs and they have good quality control, they're well made, and they're still cheaper than some of their competitors that are pushing out junk. Now, Let's take a look at how this slightly unusual lighter operates. This top piece here unscrews. And as you pull it out, you'll notice that it is O-ring sealed. And here at the end, we get this fuzzy little wick here. And in the middle, there is a hardened steel little scraper. And what you do with that is you scrape it down this grooved area here, which is a small diameter ferro rod that's epoxied onto the side of the lighter. And that creates sparks and ignites this piece here, which works like a match, hence the name. Now on the bottom of this lighter, there is this plug here, but you never need to mess with that. You can fill the lighter through the same hole that the match goes in. And this lighter uses the old-fashioned liquid fuel, the same as for Zippos and other lighters that use a wick. This is not the compressed butane gas fuel. Uh, do not confuse the two. They do not work. <laughs> uh, they are not interchangeable. Now, these things always have little spouts that need to have long fingernails or a knife to sort of pop it open. There we go. So let's put a bit of fuel into this one and try it out. That should do for demonstration purposes. And put the match back in. Let it soak up some of that fuel. And I need to wipe this lighter off because I spilled a little fuel on it. And if I lit it like that, I'd set my fingers on fire. And as amusing as that would be for you, I would prefer to avoid that. Okay, we should be good to go now. That feel wet? Eh, kinda. Maybe I didn't fill it quite enough. Ah, there we go. Yep. Okay. And the best way I've found to do this is not a striking motion like that, like with a standard match. Although that can work, I prefer to go in sort of a plowing motion. This is a new ferro rod, so it'll take a few scrapes. There we go. Foosh. And you have yourself a metal match. And you can light your candle, stick it, you know, under your fire to get it going. To, you know, light up the paper or tinder you have down there under the stack of twigs. All the flexibility and handling you would have with a match you have with this. And when you're done, you just stick it in there, screw it down. That's really all there is to say about that in terms of operating. It's a very interesting little device, and I would say that is one of the, the good points. This, this is a bit of a conversation piece of a lighter. Probably most people won't have seen it before, and I think the uh, design is very attractive. Also, even when you run out of fluid, uh, you might have some luck uh, igniting some natural tinder by sparking the ferro rod here. Now, there are a few downsides from a practical point of view. 
And the first is that it definitely takes two hands to operate. Most other lighters, you're going to be able to do one-handed very, very easily. This one, you need to hold each piece in a different hand, and the striking motion requires a fair amount of manual dexterity. Might get a little trickier if uh, you were extremely cold, for example, and it would prove darn near impossible if you had, a, say, one broken arm or something. But, and also, it is two pieces, it's conceivable that you could lose the match, which would be a real bummer. But on the other hand, it has essentially no moving parts to break down. It is basically a ferro rod and a scraper, and there just happens to be a fuel reservoir. So overall, I think it's a very interesting design. I really like mine. And I hope you guys enjoy the video, and you enjoy the rest of your day too, I hope. Bye-bye. Back with a little bit of supplemental information I completely forgot about. You might be wondering what you do when the wick gets burnt down. Here's one that's been in use for a while. And, see, the wick isn't fluffy anymore. It's kind of toasted and a lot smaller. It still works, but with a couple months more use, it might stop working. It might get too far burnt down. So what do you do? Well, helps if you have a pair of pliers. And what you do is you grab a little hardened steel scraper bit, and you just pull it out like a tooth. Set that carefully somewhere you won't lose it. And this now is just a common wick. Probably the same as you'd see on a Zippo. It does have the uh, little uh, metal wire running through it to give it some stiffness. And so you pull it farther up. And you take your little scraper thingy. The rounded end goes in first, and the square end you leave sticking out. And you stick it in, like that. And then carefully you find a firm surface to push it against. I'm not sure this plastic table will do it. There we go. There. Didn't come out perfectly even, but you get the idea. Now you have a lot more wick sticking out. Maybe actually a little too much for this one. But the scraper is still accessible. Let's see how it works. Might produce too big a flame. Eh, not bad. So, there you go. That's how you adjust and or replace a lick, a wick, a lick. <laughs> That's how you adjust to replace a wick on a permanent match lighter.